Hey there, guys. My name is Rick Utzler here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today is kind of a cool review because it's not really a full review because there's too much to talk about in this gun in just one session. So today we're going to do an overview of this is my personal gun. I bought this back in May when we had Airgun Expo. This is the Daystate Red Wolf. And if you guys are not familiar with what this gun brings to the air gunning table, I hope by the end of this video, you're gonna be pretty excited. Let's get into it. So let's go ahead and get into it. What is the Daystate Red Wolf and why did I buy this gun? This is something that I purchased myself. Uh, the scope was provided by Hawk. This is like an amazing scope. This is the new Sidewinder. This is the 6 to 24 first focal plane. Exceptionally great scope. So I put the best scope I had in my inventory on this rifle. Just it's that good. We'll get to all that here in a minute. But the Daystate, it is the Daystate Red Wolf. It is basically an electronic air gun shooting platform. When I say electronic, it, it's all electronics. In here, you don't have the traditional hammer spring and sear and all of those other things. Literally, you have a solenoid that is tuned from the computer to hit the valve in such a way that it produces consistent results based on the pressure in the tank. It's very, very smart. The, trigger is a micro switch. Uh, the cocking lever here, while it does have a pellet pusher that pushes the pellet in, it's not setting a hammer or anything. So literally there's just a micro switch at the end of that cocking stroke and now it knows that you're ready to fire. The trigger pull on this gun uh, is scary light. It's like two ounces, which is incredible. The noise, we're talking 95 dB. So that's right at the muzzle. All right, so let me walk through how this whole system works because it's pretty cool. Um, there, the magazine is an 11 shot mag, which kind of confused me a little bit when I was shooting today. I realized, wait a minute, there's 11 shots in there. So all my groups I shot were 10 shots. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's say you're running something heavier, like you want to try and run slugs. And today I thought I'd pull out a couple slugs. So we shot two slugs and two pellets, and we shot them at various different power levels depending on what each one liked and that's what's really cool about this because if I had a traditional you know you know mechanical gun that wasn't electronic um, I would need to tune it and get the crony out and all kind of settings and you know you, you would have to do work setting it up for each each pellet or maybe there's a dial that gets you close but this is electronic it's very precise and the profiles aren't just pressure. The profiles are, are how the valve works, how much air it's letting through. It just, it's very specific in what's going on with how this system is going gonna, is gonna to operate for you. All right, let's go ahead and do our, let's go ahead and set the power. So I'm going to open this up, go into programming mode. Okay, and let go and pull and hold. And it's going to cycle between power level and the other. I'm going to go to power level. And now it automatically goes to high power. And then you just pull the trigger to cycle to which power level you want to go to. So let's say we want to run slugs. We're going to shoot high power. Once you've got it to where you want it, go ahead and shut your cocking handle. And you hear that little clunk. That lets you know the programming has been accepted. So that's all there is to program it. If I want to change this to medium power, I'd open it up again and hold the trigger, go into programming mode, let go, hold the trigger again, and let it cycle to where I wanted, which I want to go to power level, and I'm going to go to medium power, shut it, and now it's set to medium power. So that's all there really is to setting the gun to different power configurations based on what you're shooting. If you want to get really technical, you can buy the programming module, which I did buy that as well, but that's like technical beyond me, and I'm hoping to actually take a visit to AOA and sit down with one of their guys, and they can show me what all the things do. I, I don't want to muck up what's working here because it's working really, really well. 
All right, so let's talk about the accuracy I got today from both the slugs and the pellets and at what power levels. The first thing I shot was the FX hybrid slug. And at 50 yards in pretty much near perfect conditions today, you can see what we got. Not terrible. Um, you know, slugs are new to me. I, I don't quite understand them yet. I'm trying to get better. Um, I'm still much more a pellet guy. But, you know, when I'm seeing all of the slugs landing basically in that area, I'm starting to get excited about what, what they really represent, because I know that they really start to shine once you get past 100 yards. Now, I don't know if this has the, like the high power, they have a high power version of this, which is probably a little bit better for slugs, but I was still pretty impressed with what I got with the slugs today. Now, the FX slugs shot at about 820 feet per second on high power, which on lower power settings, they did not group at all. So this is where that's very cool to be able to just set the power setting, and then all of a sudden, that thing that didn't shoot now shoots. That is pretty cool. We go over to the JSB knockout slugs, and I think they did, I think they did a little better, actually. Um, they just tended to cluster in that nice little group. Now, I did have to use my mill dots to adjust uh, for this just a teeny bit um, because it, the scope had been set up um, specifically for the FX slugs, because that's the last thing I tested before putting cameras out. But as you can see, very decent little solid cluster of shots there. Again, shooting on high power. And these were doing 790 feet per second, which is, we'll put the math up there so you guys see the energy, but pretty decent. I think if we could get those in the 900s, like maybe with the Red Wolf high power or something that can really push them a little bit faster, they may do better. But here's the cool thing. I actually went to shoot pellets now, and all I needed to do was basically set my power down from high to medium, and I switched over to the uh, Barracuda Match. Now, these are a match-grade domed hunting pellet, and they really did very, very well. I mean, they just chewed out the center of that bullseye. Um, we're talking 10 shots, 50 yards, again, ideal conditions. Medium power, we're pushing about 820 feet per second, so you can see where you know, you can, you can actually, based on what you're shooting and what your power setting is, you can get in that sort of ideal velocity. But those were very stable, shot very, very well, very consistently. Lastly, I switched over to the at one threes. Now, those, you know, I thought would do really well on medium, but they were really just all over the place. And I said, well, let's go ahead and turn it down a little bit. And turning the power down puts me at about 790 feet per second. So just under 800 feet per second. But you can see um, that, I think, delivered our best group of all. It just cut a hole in the center of the target there. Um, and I'm using just a little bit of the mill dot to adjust uh, to, to make that point of impact work for me. But that's impressive. I mean, when you have something that you can just pick a pellet, you know, within reason, find the power setting that suits it, and then be successful with that pellet, to me, that's pretty awesome. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up our introduction here to the Daystate Red Wolf. This is not a full exhaustive review. You know, that's gonna take time. <laughs> There's so much to get, to get into with this platform. We're gonna take it in little bite-sized chunks. But today I wanted to give you just an idea of what the platform can do, how it works, the flexibility with the different things you can shoot out of it, and just tell you, it's a lot of fun. It's probably not gonna be your first air gun, but if you're into the sport and you become like an enthusiast, excited about air gunning, you may, you know, translate to something like this over time because as you get into the sport, uh, something like this starts to make more sense if it's something you're really passionate about. I love this gun. I think it's a great gun to go out and shoot with, and I'm excited to see what I can do with it this coming up 2022. Guys, that's gonna be it. My name's Rick Kutzer here with Airgun Web. You're home for old school airgun reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.